Here on the bench is a Tascam 244. I've got a problem with a short to ground. So the video is going to be mostly about how we might deal with the short to ground in a situation where a lot of the boards are kind of tucked away and we can't get at them with methods like putting cold spray on the boards in order to see where the board's heating up due to the short. I'll just briefly describe how we got to this point. This came in with a few minor errors, one of which was that the counter wasn't responding properly. It was responding properly in rewind mode, but it wasn't responding at all in fast forward mode. And in play mode, it was jumping from one to zero to one to zero to one to zero over and over again. I began by trying to look for problems with control board B because that's the one that feeds the counter. Uh, but somewhere in the middle of that process, magic smoke uh, came from this area. I went in there, you can see I've replaced two of the reservoir capacitors and those relate to one of three secondary windings on the transformer. That winding sends plus and minus 15 volts down to control B exclusively for the use of the counter. But it also powers a 12 volt regulator, which sends some of its power here and some of it to the record board. Now that's an additional 12 volt regulator to the ones that are supplying the positive rail of the op amps on other boards. Uh, why they've got two regulators for that, I suspect it's just the way they worked it out in this sort of rat's nest modular design. I think on later iterations of Porter Studio where it's mostly split into two boards, one attached to the bottom half of the case and one attached to the top half of the case, you would only have one 12 volt regulator for the positive side of the op amp swing. Anyway, after I'd fixed that, I was still getting absolutely nothing from that winding of the transformer, like no voltage coming out of it altogether. And so in addition to blowing these two caps, the transformer had actually died. So you can see from various wires where they've been mended in the middle with shrink wrap that I have actually put in a spare transformer there. I find that cutting these in the middle and then fixing it with shrink wrap in that way is easier than completely removing this board because there's so many other connections. Just uh, less work overall for me, less billable hours for the customer. The result now is that the counter works fine. So I, I'm going to assume that the counter problem was caused by the transformer in its death throes. The problem that I have now is that as soon as this is turned on, a different one of the secondary windings on this transformer, which supplies the 12 volt and negative 12 volt to all the other op amps in the system, is immediately blowing these two slow blow fuses. And I know that because there's no audio. And then when I remove these two 500 milliamp slow blow fuses and test them with the continuity mode of my digital multimeter, they're open circuit. And I've tried to reproduce it by putting in fresh ones and just observing this little board as it's booted up. And you can see them just flash a bright yellow as they burn out. So those are my uh, third set of replacements that are in there now. So I alluded at the beginning of the video to a method where supposing all the boards that are connected to this are out and exposed and either we have the uh, US market model that doesn't have this fuse board in it to begin with or in this case I could take those fuses out and run a jumper over the socket holder for the fuses and actually allow whatever is causing a short to ground to heat up. Then what you can do is spray cold spray on each of the boards in turn and see if there's a part of the board where the cold condensation heats up and disappears faster. That's one way without buying an expensive heat sensitive camera that you can find the area where the board's getting really hot and it's a bit less of a needle in a haystack situation where you're trying to find the short to ground. The other solution is to buy a heat sensitive camera. But I mean, they're well over a hundred quid. I mean, I think it's a couple of hundred quid for a good one. And uh, it just seems like a lot of money to spend for a bit of kit you're only going to use once in a blue moon. I mean, I probably will buy one eventually because I'm doing this for a living now, but I haven't reached that stage yet. So what I'm going to do, which should allow me to continue to protect the circuits with the slow blow fuses and is ideally only going to cost me whatever it is for a packet of slow blow fuses of that value, a few pounds, I think, is start off with the power supply board disconnected from all the boards which are powered by the rail that's blowing on these fuses and then plug them in one by one and watch for these fuses blowing. The point of this is not to establish exactly where the short is, 
but to narrow down which board it's located on because this is a very time consuming model to have to take the boards out and reconnect the wires. The modular design is a blessing in some ways, but in a situation like this, it is kind of a curse. It would be easier to deal with this if this had happened on something like a 44 Mark III, where the system, although it's more complicated, is distributed in far fewer bits of circuit board. Once we have narrowed down which of the boards the short to ground is occurring on, hopefully, when we get it out and look at it closely, it's going to be rather obvious what is broken. Often when I've had shorts to ground, capacitors have very obviously exploded. Operational amplifiers have blown themselves into several pieces. If there isn't an obvious visual sign like that, then I will go over to Photoshop and I'll look at schematics, which for this model, I've probably already done a lot of work to kind of color code and process in my mind how the circuit works. But if I haven't already done that for the board involved, what I would do is create a transparent layer over the top of the schematic and then with a colored brush tool, follow that rail and see which components on that board it hits. And then I would just debug those one by one in circuit if I can, out circuit if I must. We're still going through a list from start to finish, trying to find a bad component, but at least it's a list that's that long rather than a list that's that long, which is where we are at the moment. Here we are in my Photoshop file. I've got a lot more color coding done to this board than this. You can see I've got loads and loads of layers of different color coding just because I've been working on this circuit so often. Um, but at the moment, the only ones that I've got lit up or you know showing which of the secondary coils uh, from the transformer relate to which power rails and it's this uh, plus and minus 12 volt rail that's popping its fuses and if we follow the color coding across then we can see which of the boards that it's connected to so it's going to the tape cue amplifier the meter amplifier all the input amplifiers so the mixers if you like the playback amplifier and the record amplifier so it's going almost everywhere so those are the ones we need to start with unplugged and plug in one by one to see where those fuses blow. If they blow with nothing attached, then we can assume that the short to ground is actually on this board. This is the board that has both the uh, rectification and filtering for the conversion of the secondary side of the AC transformer into DC that's used by the components, but it's also got output section, master bus, um, some stuff to do with auxiliary sense and everything is on that board as well. Based on the information on the schematic, I've made this list. So the connection from that secondary winding to the tape queue is on plug P. 304, which is 4 pin, to the meter, it's P805, which is 4 pin. Each of the four amplifiers, the mixers if you like, um, then that's going to be J101, which is a 7 pin connection. Then on the power PCB, I don't know why I've written PCB, it should be PSU, I think I was going for and I had a brain fart. But anyway, that's J705, that's a 6 pin connector that's sending power to both the record and playback amplifiers. So let's uh, locate and unplug those cables. The tape queue, E304. I'm gonna guess it's gonna be this red one. Difficult to see the writing beside the socket, but I'm confident that that's correct. Right, the meter is P805, for, so I'm looking for a four pin. Connects from this board to the meter. If I shine a torch in behind that socket, it does actually say there. That one in the top left corner for the meter board. Now J705, which is connecting to the record and playback board, I think it's going to be this one here. Pull that out with the pliers. Yeah, J705 is that one. J101, I assume, is this one. It does say on text on the board, though it's partly obscured by the socket itself. Unplug all those connectors. I'll get the camera set up to point at this and see if we can capture a moment where these two low blow fuses incinerate. So this is a reshoot because I forgot to change over the fuses before I shot this passage the first time. So let's just first establish that uh, these are new intact fuses by using the continuity tester. There we go, that's passing an electrical current. There we go, that's passing an electrical current. So. I don't have a two camera setup, so you're going to have to rely on my narration to tell you what I'm plugging back in. 244 is plugged into the wall, 
We're watching for these to briefly go yellow as they burn out. So as I turn on the unit, there we go. Do you see that? Even with nothing else attached, something uh, within the power supply board itself is shorting. Now that's not to say that the failure of the transformer hasn't burned through the rest of the system and caused shorts to ground in other boards. But before we can start diagnosing that, I need to find the shorts to ground and repair them on that board. Again, because of this handheld camera issue, I don't have the entire schematic or the facility to zoom in and out. But I promise you that the components that are in shot are the only ones between the secondary side of the transformer on the left and uh, all the output sockets that we looked at before. So what we've got here is the bridge rectifier. So that takes two center tap windings out of the secondary transformer and creates a sort of one way system so that you end up with this kind of half rectified DC signal. So it's all bumps on one side and then these filter capacitors will fill in those bumps so it's a much less wiggly line and then if we were looking at it on an oscilloscope I mean and then the voltage regulators U902 and U903 are responsible for turning that into a much steadier positive and negative 12 volts respectively and then these 47 microfarad capacitors and these tiny little capacitors off to the right that's providing further smoothing so I'm going to replace those electrolytic capacitors anyway because they are meant to have a shelf life of really about 20, 25 years anyway and it's like a 40 year old machine so even if they're not faulty per se it can't do any harm. I'll test the small value caps out of circuit just to make sure they're not open circuit and um, I'll test this out of circuit and make sure that we've got no shorts there. And it doesn't connect directly to ground, so it's unlikely to be the main cause of a short to ground. It's more likely to be one of these caps or the voltage regulator. Although, if they've become damaged by the, you know, the catastrophic failure of the previous transformer, then it's quite likely this has been as well. So if I need to replace that, I'll be going to my elephant's graveyard of 244 parts in my garage. Although I could probably buy a compatible bridge rectifier for a couple of quid in most electrical wholesalers. As you can probably see from the gold color of these replacement capacitors, 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 uh, as compares with the black of the original, they have been replaced. This is the bridge rectifier that we identified. It tested fine out of circuit, as did both of the voltage regulators. Are they ceramic? Are they mica? Anyway, these sort of like orange disc shaped capacitors. Capacitors. They tested out of circuit okay as well. These blue capacitors um, have been replaced as well. So let's get some fresh fuses in here and repeat our test see if this has done the trick stopping the fuses from blowing as soon as we power on let's see how we do that's progress they haven't blown we can start to plug in the cables one by one and try the tape cue seems okay counter etc meters record and playback board channel one Channel 2, channel 3, channel 4. Hopefully that's us out of the woods. So nothing's blowing and you know, you can see I've got sound coming from the headphones. Um, sounds reaching the meters. 